Hello, my name is Shallon Fry and I'm the training manager here at Morris Jenkins. I'm so excited to be here with you today to read the story, How Does My Home Work? Actually, this is quite a really interesting story and it happens to be a nonfiction text. So when we read through this book today, we are gonna learn about some nonfiction text features along with how electricity, energy, water, and natural gas all work. Are you ready? Great, let's go. You do neat things every day in your home. You flip the switch and the light goes on. You push a button and the TV comes on. You turn on the faucet and clean water comes out. You take a drink from the refrigerator and it's cool and fresh. These seem like magic, but they're not. So how do they happen? Under the floors and behind the walls of your home are pipes that bring in water and natural gas wires that bring in electricity day and night. Let's take a look at this picture here. We see lots of colorful lines going inside this house. Well, that's a text feature that this book offers. If we look right here, we have a key and all of these colored lines tell us what the lines in our house represent. So we can look at this blue line and we see that the blue line comes up from the ground and enters our house. And that tells us that we have clean, cold water coming into our house. Take a look at that picture for a minute and look at where that blue line goes. The blue line goes over to a water tank. That water tank can keep the water cold, but also make your water hot. That's how you are able to take a bath at night or take a shower in the morning. Look at that blue line also comes up to your toilet. Ew, think about if your toilet didn't flush. We definitely need water going to our toilet. That line also comes into our kitchen where your mom or your dad or even you make food each and every day. We definitely need clean water coming into our house. But we can also tell by looking at this key by this white line that dirty, yucky water that's in our house that needs to go out comes back out of the house. So we can take a look at that white line and there it goes. That's pretty cool stuff right there. All the machines that people use every day need energy to make them work. Take a look at this, these two pages. Look at all of the machines that need energy to work in your home. Things like a TV in game console, or an iron, or a fan, or even a hair dryer. As you look at these pictures, think for a moment. Has there ever been a time in your home where you had no electricity or no power? I know there have been times in my home, and guess what? That created a really bad hair day when my hair dryer did not work. Where does electricity come from? Check out that, those words right there. What, where does electricity come from? That's a heading. That's also a text feature in nonfiction text. That tells us as the reader what we're gonna read about next. Can you guess? That's right, we're gonna learn about electricity. Electricity occurs naturally in the form of lightning. The energy from just one bolt of lightning could boil enough water for more than 50,000 cups of hot chocolate. Holy smokes, that's a lot of hot chocolate. But of course, we can't use lightning to power our homes. The electricity we use is made in power stations. Most power stations burn natural gas or coal to heat water, but this sends smoke containing harmful chemicals into the air and we don't want that. Nuclear power stations most often use an element called uranium to heat water. The waste from this process can be dangerous if not handled properly. In power stations, water is boiled to make steam. The steam spins the blades of a turbine around which turns a, turns a machine called a generator. Inside the generator, a coil of copper wire spins around a set of magnets, which produces electricity. Here's another text feature the author put in this book. It showed us a diagram of a turbine and what happens inside that turbine. And I needed to know a little bit more about a turbine, so I did, took some time and did some research. 
Maybe you should too, if you wanna learn more about a turbine. There are cleaner ways to make electricity. The power of fast moving water can be used to turn turbines. Wind turbines make electricity using wind power. Sol solar panels absorb sunlight, which can be used to produce electricity. Again, we see another text feature. Here, there are captions, and captions describe the picture. And now I can look at all of these pictures and know exactly what the author wanted me to know. Here's a challenge for you. The next time you get in your car with your mom or your dad or your grandpa, or your grandma, or your aunt, your uncle, or whoever you wanna take a ride with, see if you can find any of these things around town. I bet if you look closely, you'll be able to find some of them. Cables carry the electricity from power stations into our homes. Take a look at this picture where we see the power station and we can see electricity going through the cables above ground. You also may find that when you're out driving about or walking through your neighborhood. But not all power lines are above ground. Some power lines run below ground, so you may not always see them, even though electricity is still coming to your home. If the sun has gone down and you're still busy, you can turn on a light. One wire takes electricity to the switch. Click, we turn on the switch. Another wire goes from the switch to the light. When you flip the switch on, a piece of metal creates a connection between the two wires that allows electricity to pass from one wire to the next. Electricity flows to the light bulb and it begins to glow. When you flip the switch off, you break the connection and the light goes out. It's not magic, it's science and that's pretty cool. Next time we come together, I'm so excited that we're gonna learn more about water and where water comes from and how much we rely on it in our house.